Hi, our teachers. We're here with Jeremy Novi, and we are going to watch him put up a work, which I'm super excited about, and just generally excited to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Can you tell us about how you came up with the design for the koi fish? Uh, yeah, I got to study, um, study ancient contemporary art um, in China, or in China uh, while going to art school. And when I was there, I studied uh, uh, propaganda posters and Chinese scrolls, and I found this story um, that was hidden in the message of the different number of fish that are in a Chinese painting. And so during the Cultural Revolution, they're supposed to destroy everything of the old to make way for the new. Um, like scholars were forced to go and be peasants, and they brought peasants in to act as if scholars, and all of these things just so that like um, th no one could overthrow the communism, like no, no one could be like smart, like Buddhism, all this stuff had to go away. And so so they hid the Chinese lucky numbers um, in the koi fish painting. So depending on how many koi fish are I paint or in a painting, um, they all reference a Chinese lucky number and um, a feng shui idea um, or philosophy in them. And, and so here I'm going to be painting three, uh, which is uh, the three stages of life, birth, marriage, and death. Um, you know, like the, the koi fish is basically a piece of um, the whole idea of Noah's Ark and um, the dove coming back with an olive branch is a Western idea. It is not an Eastern idea. And um, no matter what Eastern country you kind of go to, Japan, China, India, like Thailand, all those places, they all have the koi fish as like their symbol of like um, love, you know, um, harmony. Like it's, it's, their, it's their like kind of prized, prized thing. And, and it's, it's tranquil, it's peaceful. And I got to go to China and I got to see people like thinking in a completely different way and like living in a completely different way. And, and like I was able to like realize that like I can think differently and I can like live differently and that like I don't know it just it just made me question more things I got to see like um, really poor uh, people being treated really poorly and like uh, poor humanity or whatnot and and to think about like how our country is going or, or like the Western society is going and and, and and to see see that just like open my mind in, in a very 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 powerful way and and so um, I really definitely wanted to bring something back with that as, as like, you know, a, a continuing continuance and and these koi fish have, have been that and and I've been spraying them all over uh, the United States um, since 2006. So you said that there is significance in the number of koi that you put in these installations. Is there also a significance with the color choices that you use? The idea of, um, behind like feng shui is like lights and darks um, and uh, orange is like a um, like a money color like a gold um, in a way like yellow um, orange and and so when I when I do them they're they're in feng shui color patterns um, and in the feng shui um, harmony I believe you know uh, I started I started doing a lot of them in San Francisco um, it's definitely where like some of my career has like taken off um, with the koi fish and so I kind of like that they're the colors of the San Francisco Giants, but like, like that's not how they were intended at first. I think that something that's really successful about them is that you are using something that is seen in water and you're kind of placing them swimming in the urban jungle. And so there's just that nice little collision of the elements. Yeah, like, you know, um, right now they're going to be really fresh when I do them. But if you wait like about a month or so and they get a little bit scuffed and worn down, it's kind of like they're swimming in the concrete and not like sitting on top of the concrete. This is, you know, very, very fitting of an urban environment because it's faux. It's, it's, it's not real. It's like right. it's industrial because it's spray paint and and things like that. And and um, and I also I also love that like this, it's, I find it it's aggressive because I use spray paint but yet it's beautiful once it's done and it's like tranquil. So there's like and this- delicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a, there's a mixture of like um, this interesting thing that I love. I also love the stuff that you do about gay pride. Yes. I think that, that stuff is really just such a strong and necessary form of activism. There, there's a lot of um, fag tagger. There's a lot of homophobia. There's a lot of misogyny even, you know, um, in this subculture of graffiti. And, and so I find I found it um, really important to put out queer images and to combat this homophobia that exists. Like anybody should be able to express their ideas. And you know, you think about like you know the Black Panthers or um, during during women's severance, uh, even the Mexican migrant farmers. They all made art and they all made like street art posters that were kind of protest. And 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 my mine are kind of images, but at the same time, they're protests for like gay rights. And like so, we're right now in this like time period, and there are actually 
quite a few artists around the world that are all making little um, queer things and they're not being documented properly because they're not really considered part of what graffiti is. And I find it very important um, to uh, put out a queer image to kind of um, talk about my, my subculture. It's really necessary that you're doing this kind of imagery because I think that there's still that idea that graffiti artists are all heteronormative. And I think that having that multiplicity of perspectives with women artists and queer artists writing and doing images about that position is just so important. There definitely still is like homophobia on the streets. So I was like uh, rejected from my family at a very young age. I, I moved out at 16. Um, I, my dad was in prison. He ended up dying of a drug overdose. Like somehow I like made it through school and put myself through college. and. I am what I am today, um, but like I really try to like make um, a lot of a lot of art about like queer rights and like acceptance for for being gay um, because because of that you know and 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 to kind of have a have this message and I'm, I'm really kind of like happy that it's being recognized and it's being like um, talked about and stuff because unlike other other people that have a family it's not like any any of my nephews are going to talk about me when I'm dead like like no one's going to talk about me when I'm dead and and and, and unless you know I do something really good for the world and and so that way I know that like when I'm gone like I existed